to know, Mother. All those years ago, what tipped you off that Gorgon was in trouble? The volunteers. Not just the shocking way they died, but the company's muted response to it. They were expensive to house, train, and treat. That the company would spare no expense, yet let so many of them die. It was terrible. I dare say not. Even when we made significant progress, Lawrence and his ghouls in OCI slashed our budgets. I knew then I'd lost control of Gorgon. I'd lost control of Adrena time. You never told me Gorgon was such a logistical nightmare. We should have had this conversation five years ago. You can't know how badly I wanted to, but the truth put you in danger. And I couldn't abide that. I owe you an apology, Captain. Not only did I deceive you, but all this time I had the wrong idea about Mother. Mother is... less than perfect, but more than a monster. Somewhere in the middle, I suppose. We still have a great deal of work ahead of us. The years of silence were not easy. I don't doubt it was hard on you, but I knew you'd come out the stronger for it. We have the chance to know each other now, thanks entirely to you. On Minnie's terms, whatever they may be. I've made enough decisions for her, I think. Well, there's no need to dwell on the past anymore. We're in the thick of it together, now that we're partners. Partners? Huh. I suppose we are. And family, I suppose. <laughs> this isn't at all playing out the way I imagined it. And for the first time, I'm glad. A calm and measured speech, followed by screaming, hurling spoons, and maybe a broken window. This is much better. I'm glad to have you as my daughter, Minnie. But I'm proud to call you my partner. But I fear things will only get harder from here. No, they certainly didn't. But what joy is there in the easy path? I believe in the work, and I believe in my daughter. That will be enough for me. You've earned this, Captain. For recovering Mother's journal. For getting us talking in the same room together. And for exceeding my expectations. Indeed. I have no use for bits and baubles on Gorgon. Not now that I have my work. Take what's yours, Captain. The road to a Marauder Cure will be a long one, and the board will surely fight us every step of the way. But this partnership, it's a damn good start. Will you put the burden of the colony aside for just one moment? Give me a day with my mother before we get back to work. For you, I will try.
Captain. It's beautiful up here. Could we? Could we get more jobs like this one? Hello, hello, hello there. Hope your atmospheric entry wasn't too troublesome. As a guest of honor, you deserve the best in comfort. Sublight Salvage and Shipping Underground, or Slug, as we like to call ourselves, is delighted to welcome you to Eridanos. I'm the Grand Colonial Head Bellhop. I'm here to grab your bags and direct you, the inspector, to the Grand Ballroom, which was the scene of the crime. I can try. I was the one who found Helen's body in the Grand Ballroom. Corpse wasn't in the best shape. Aside from that, I don't know a whole lot. Helen was supposed to host the unveiling for Rizzo's newest product, Spectrum Brown. Until you catch the killer, the unveiling has been indefinitely postponed. Helen's death has been a shock for many. A lot of people are inconsolable. Hell, even Black Hole Birdie, Helen's bow has wandered off. Some folks think he had something to do with the murder, but I don't believe it. He did it. It's always the boyfriend. I still don't understand why anyone would have it in for Ms. Helen. Folks get heated when it comes to serials and their actors, I suppose. Don't I know it. Reminds me of the shootout in the lobby between Odeon Pictures and Rotor Reels back in the day. And you wonder why nobody mentions Rotor Reels anymore. Probably because they embarrassed themselves. The CEO of the company boasted that his crew could operate better and longer than Odeon Pictures Mechanicals. I watched as Dr. Goodnight dragged him out of the lobby while he slept like a baby. The rest of his crew folded in a matter of days. Let's see here. Oh, I already spoke briefly about the Spectrum unveiling, or lack thereof. It's still an awful shame. A lot of folks looking forward to that. I do. Rizzo's happened to rent out the Grand Colonial Ballroom from Slug for the unveiling. A nice mutually beneficial event. But the murder's gone and ruined that. Along with nine out of ten of my favorite cereals. Anyway, I think I've held you up long enough. Once you're ready, head down to the lobby. The ballroom is just behind the elevators. Meanwhile, I'll grab your bags. I think I must have had something in my ear. I could have sworn you did. Greetings, Inspector. No need to check in here. Your paperwork has all been processed. You should be able to find the Colonial right ahead. I've been starting to play a little game as we travel. You might be a top runger if your hotel is taller than the highest mountain on Monarch. Black hole birdies disappeared, you know. That poor fellow must be inconsolable. Oh, thank the law. Inspector, you don't know how relieved I am to see you. I'm pleased to hear that. Our coroner has developed a device which may prove useful in your investigation. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Our office has instructed her to hand it over to you. Oh, please. You make it sound as if I'm turning over stolen goods. Behold, my discrepancy amplifier. Hold it in your hands. Feel the way it hums with ontological potential. I work with the materials to which I have access. Halcyon has no shortage of rifles. 
The discrepancy amplifier uses a deterministic model of our universe to detect the discrepancy between what should be and what actually is. Then it renders any discrepancies visible by using the power of magnification. Oh, goodness, no. I don't care for OSI doctrine. I just enjoy their math. I'm contractually prohibited from endorsing off-brand technology, but I'll bend that rule just this once. You'll want to peer into the amplifier and examine the crime scene. related to Halcyon Helen, unscheduled expiration of begin amplification. The discrepancy amplifier has been programmed with advanced speech recognition, scientific analysis, and deterministic calculus protocols. Oh, you'll love this. Amplifier, tell the inspector about your features. Please do not interrupt the discrepancy amplifier. The discrepancy amplifier is programmed to take instruction from its registered or designated inspector. How curious. I must have set its impertinence levels to flagrant. This unit's features include an automated personality simulator. This unit has been programmed to simulate joy and satisfaction in assisting you. This footprint stands out from the normally spotless floor of the Grand Ballroom. Typically, the ballroom is cleaned twice daily, which means this must have been made by either Helen or her assailant or assailants. Footprint is a teller made 8.75, suggesting that its owner was very particular about their shoe size. It is also the exact size that Halcyon Helen typically prefers. There are traces of dirt throughout the footprint. Oh no, Captain, please don't taste the dirt, and I'm too late. The dirt carries traces of fertilizer, as well as the faint signs of crushed purpleberries and grass. Grass, fertilizer, and purpleberries can all be found in the purpleberry orchards, located not far from the Grand Colonial. Can we give him a name? I'm gonna call him Arthur. He seems like an Arthur. All buttoned up, but polite and kind of sweet. This unit has been programmed to simulate gratitude. Thank you, Inspector. Good work, Inspector. I had a feeling we'd make some progress once we brought you onto the case. You'll need Administrator Ludovico to grant you access to the orchards. Contact him through the secure access terminal in your penthouse suite. Check in with the concierge. Your room should be ready by now. If it isn't, I may have to go shake someone by the collar. I'm sorry, sir, but while the hotel is an active crime scene, I regret to inform you that all new bookings, room upgrades, room downgrades, and in-room massages are suspe- Oh, you're the special inspector. Mr. Kincannon warned me you'd be checking in soon. Ah, yes. We are most pleased to offer you our grandest of grand accommodations, Inspector. The penthouse suite on our topmost floor is now available for you. The last guest left her belongings behind when she vacated unexpectedly, so we needed a little time to tidy the suite up for you. Simply call the elevator in the lobby and our highly skilled operator will deliver you to your private floor with efficiency and cheer.
my inordinately esteemed guest. If my hello were any more earnest, this loudspeaker would explode! What authorized floor can I bring you to? Next stop, the finest seat in the house. You think June Light would like this place? Oh, probably not. I don't think she cares much for corporate comfort. You think they'll let us expense the booze? You think they'd object to me setting up a tanning station here? Did you know the smoke from high society cigarettes is terrible? I sometimes find myself musing on who I used to think I was. It seems ridiculous in hindsight, but without my obsession, I never would have reached this point. Inspector, I understand you've visited the scene of the crime. Halcyon Helen was an important cultural icon. She will be sorely missed. It's the circumstances of her death that trouble me. Our spokesperson was murdered just before the grand unveiling of Spectrum Brown. If I belonged to a rival company, I'd be ecstatic. It's always a possibility. Corporate sabotage is practically a pastime in this colony. Back to the matter at hand. Tell me about your investigation. Your discretion is appreciated. I admit, I'm beginning to feel more confident in this arrangement. Here, I'm granting you access through the gates to the orchards. You're officially authorized to see this investigation through to the end. There is one caveat. Cedric's being rather intransigent about letting you into the spaceport. Possibly he's trying to hide something. Possibly he wants to annoy me. Possibly both. I agree with the sentiment behind your snide remark. Unfortunately, the Piraeus spaceport is Cedric's purview, not mine. You have a lead to chase. Law speed, Inspector. Hi there, Inspector. It might be a little beyond my job description to ask, but at my heart, I'm still a bellhop. Was the sweet to your liking? I'm glad. Now, I'd love to bring you to a floor of your choosing. Oh, you're that inspector, right. Uh, sorry, but the pool's currently closed on account of it stinking worse than my boss. <laughs> what can I do for you? Space me if I knew. I got here from my shift this morning and found it this way. They can't yell at me for this one, which is good, because a lot of folks seem upset by it.
Gee, you're pretty sharp. Yeah, the reception party would have extended out here, but we had to close it off. What with the contamination? And now the reception ain't happening anyway. Can't do much now, but wait for the stench to wear off. We found the individual hired to clean face down in a puddle of his own spit in the orchards. Guess he won't be helping. Uh, all right. You may want to visit the sun parlor. That's where that Rizzo's fool mixed the chemicals he used. Oh, and you can talk to Lily, my boss. She probably has some great advice. I saw her walk toward the bridge to the Purpleberry Orchards earlier. Reckon she's still there. Now, uh, anything else I can do for you? But we're in the middle of a lockdown. No one's supposed to. And when I can't get a hold of anyone in the orchards, I can't make sure of that, can I? No, Miss Vargas. Sorry, I'll work on getting a hold of someone. Great. Beth. I'll be waiting right here. I swear to the architect, Matthias. If you've lost your rifle's ionization coil again. Oh, wait. You ain't part of my crew. What do you want? Oh, thank the law you're here about the pool. That crucial thing that isn't my job to fix, and that, as such, I don't care about. If you want advice, here it is. Don't talk to that imbecile ever again. Even by my crew's standards, he's duller than a telescoping staff. And he's not even one of my worst problems. I got landing pad lockdowns, gate closures, angry guests, and now one of my crew is AWOL. If you're serious, I'd appreciate the help. He's been missing a few days, and we're low on staff as it is. It's not exactly uncommon for slug agents to go on the odd bender. They'll pick a place they think I don't know about and hunker down. Usually I don't bother with the discipline and paperwork. Gotta pick your battles. Thing is, they usually resurface within 24 hours, or at least yell for medical help. This guy, not a peep. The missing crew member's Evan O'Connell. He's one of about two slug agents I can trust with more complex tasks than stand here and look tough. Friendly type. Well-behaved, followed orders. Anyone else, I'd think they got drunk and fell asleep in a ditch somewhere, but O'Connell's not really the type. He was last stationed at the Wilderness Checkpoint. I'd search there first. of this compound is 80% semblant of fertilizer used in the purpleberry orchards. The other 20% is semblant of pool water. of man's feeble attempts at control. Whew. Thanks for the help back there. I've uh, actually never fired a gun before. Is this ringing in your ears normal? Hmm. 
Hmm, that's more than a little disconcerting, since I maxed out my medical allotment this month. That's what I call my booze fund. Still, I had to be alive to be able to go deaf later. I'm not sure if I actually hit any shots. If you hadn't intervened, it could have been bleak. I'm just as confused as you are. Someone should have been on shift to see them coming. Miss Vargas would probably have a better idea of what happened. She's stationed at a luxury pad. What do you mean? Oh. You know? They warned me about freelancers, but I forgot what they said. Also, who they were. Anyway, here.
Oh, thanks a million, Inspector. The smell cleared right up. Law well, in a couple hours, the guests might even be back. Then I actually gotta start doing my job. Of course, we're not gonna get a follow-up shipment for the water anytime soon, so they'll have to content themselves on the deck. I got a little something for making my job that much less miserable. It's the key to our storeroom. If my boss asks, you never met me. Uh, I guess I can spare a few bits. And, uh, here, this pack of smokes. Sorry they don't really load me up with the goods. I gotta get back to it if you don't mind, Inspector. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Analysis concludes. The losing player used an overly cautious strategy that led to an insurmountable deficit in points. Slug discipline records show a half dozen reports of illegal gambling in games of chance on company property. Perhaps there's evidence of an ante for this game?
Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. The garb on this security guard identifies him as a member of the Rizzo's corporation. His rank would have been that of jawbreaker or higher. This security guard has experienced premature expiration. Evidence strongly suggests a conflict with marauders. Death removes that which we worked so hard to create in life, a shell to protect us from pain. But it is this shell, this self, that is the cause of all our suffering. He is now free. Danvers, nightly report number 27. No sign of trouble, but I'm on the lookout. If it's out there, I'll find it. Wait, I think I see someone. Approaching now. Excuse me, sir or madam. I require your participation in my nightly security report.
Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Timeline discrepancy detected. This card also expired prematurely, following a violent encounter with marauders. Rest in peace, buddy. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. Hey, Crew C, it's Amelia. Evan must have gotten into the spectrum in these crates. Listen to this. Come out! Come out to play! Whoa! He's having a grand old time. I'm gonna take him to A2 under the hotel so he can sleep it off. I'll meet you back at the orchard straight after. See you soon. Evan, come on, you slackwit! Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. This card also expired prematurely, following a violent encounter with marauders. Rizzo Spectrum Vodka, after Taste the Rainbow. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. This is a bottle of unreleased Rizzo's product. Helen appears to have attempted to use it to spell something as she expired, but all she managed was a sticky bee. Hypothesis is plausible, but requires additional information.
This evidence has been recorded for later reference. Now generating pre-approved complement. Splendid work, Inspector. Hmm, well, I suppose I've seen stranger marketing maneuvers. Not sure what Rizzo's was trying to accomplish with this one. Well... Why, hello there. Goodness, I always enjoy seeing guests, but it's been so long since I've chatted face to face that I about hopped out of my skin at the sight of you. Excuse me, I should introduce myself, though you might know me already, just not by name. I'm Bellhop Sullivan. You've likely heard my dulcet tones through the elevator intercom. Oh, that's so nice of you to say. I'm glad to meet you, too. Now that our introductions are out of the way, do let me know if I can help you with anything. Well, yes, but having an operator certifies that the right guests end up on the proper floors. We wouldn't want toss ball players rubbing shoulders with CEOs. It'd be anarchy. Plus, there's always the risk a guest chips a nail or loses a ring on a button. It's an extra effort, but the Grand Colonial prides itself on personalized service in all things. That and the elevator still works if I'm ever not around. I do take occasional breaks and sleep every so often. Oh yes, Norville's great. Always ready to help any and all guests who might need it, and so handsome, too. His judgment sometimes leaves something to be desired, I will say. Kept badgering Halcyon Helen prior to her death about an autograph or something. A little beyond his station. Unfortunately not. I was in the operator room for the elevator, as usual. The camera feed only allows me to see within the elevator, which always has many people coming through. For what it's worth, the murder was a right shame. I always enjoyed the serials starring Ms. Helen, though I did find them prone to repetitive plot structures. But I'm sure you've heard the rumor about what actually did her in. That marauders got into the hotel and management is covering it up so the guests don't run off? Well... Not necessarily, but they're fairly prevalent on the other complexes. It wouldn't take much for them to find their way here. 
Slug claims they've got the problem under control, but I don't understand why they haven't simply gone and exterminated all of the marauders like the vermin they are. Oh, well, I'm just here to push buttons. How the hell could I not have heard of? Right. Did we win? How exciting! Oh, I hope I didn't get blown. Someone come help me. discrepancy detected nearby. Timeline discrepancy detected nearby. The fridge was transported here from one of the guest bedrooms upstairs.
pipeline discrepancy detected nearby. Pipeline discrepancy detected nearby. I'm going. 